Welcome to Stealth Prepper. Think about it, when the SHTF chaos is inevitable, you my friend need to be ready. Picture this, a normal day suddenly disrupted, the world descends into turmoil. The SHTF, a common term in the prepper community, shorthand for when the stuff hits the fan. It's a scenario none of us want to imagine, but it's crucial to be prepared for. In the blink of an eye, your familiar surroundings transform into a maze of panic and disorder. The once mundane public spaces, now a battlefield of desperation. The risks, stampedes, panic, a fight for survival. The solution? Stay on the fringes, keep a low profile, and always have an escape plan. Preparedness isn't about fear, it's about survival. It's about pre-planning and understanding the terrain of chaos. It's about knowing where to avoid when the inevitable chaos comes knocking. Avoiding crowded public spaces is just the tip of the iceberg, let's dive deeper. In the wake of disaster, grocery stores and gas stations are the first to fall. These places, usually teeming with life, suddenly become epicenters of panic and desperation. It's a phenomenon we've seen time and again, where the calm goes out the window and survival instincts take over. People rush in, grabbing whatever they can off the shelves, not knowing when they'll be restocked. The result? Conflicts erupt over dwindling resources, leading to a scarcity of essential supplies. Gas stations are no different. Cars line up, engines idling as people scramble to fill their tanks before the pumps run dry. But here's the thing. It doesn't have to be this way. Preparedness is key. Having enough supplies on hand before disaster strikes can help avoid these chaotic scenes. Stock up on essentials, plan for contingencies, and always have a backup. Remember when the shelves are empty, you'll wish you had prepared. When fear strikes, people rush for protection. In the aftermath of disaster, gun and outdoor stores become a beacon for those seeking a means to defend themselves. The quiet aisles filled with fishing rods and tents transform into bustling, desperate markets of survival. But these places, seemingly a haven of safety, carry their own risks. The demand for firearms and ammo skyrockets and these essential tools of protection become scarce commodities. Shelves are emptied in the blink of an eye, leaving many empty-handed and vulnerable. And let's not forget the potential legal barriers. In times of crisis, laws can change, restrictions can tighten, making it more difficult to acquire what you need when you need it most. So, where does this leave us? With an important lesson, preparedness is key. Having a plan and the necessary supplies beforehand can save you from diving headfirst into the desperate rush for protection. Desperation can make people do dangerous things. In a disaster, hospitals become battlegrounds. Picture this, as an immediate response to a crisis, people flock to hospitals seeking medical attention. The influx of patients is massive and the healthcare system, even in the best of times, is not designed to handle such a surge. The result? Overwhelmed medical facilities, stretched thin on resources, and grappling with long wait times. Sure, doctors and nurses are doing their absolute best but they are only human. They can't attend to everyone at once so they have to prioritize. They must decide who needs immediate attention and who can wait. A decision no one ever wants to make. This surge in demand for medical services creates a chaotic environment that can be as dangerous as the disaster itself. Staying safe means avoiding crowded areas, even hospitals. It's a grim reality, but it underlines the importance of preparedness in mitigating the effects of a disaster. When the world is in chaos, even simple things become scarce. Imagine this, a world where the corner pharmacy, your lifeline for prescription medications is devoid of its life-saving supplies. This isn't some dystopian fiction, but a harsh reality in the aftermath of a disaster. Pharmacies, like other essential services, bear the brunt of panic and desperation, leading to shortages of critical drugs. In the face of such scarcity, desperation can drive individuals to extremes, even illegal acquisition of drugs. This emphasizes the importance of preparedness. Having a well-stocked first aid kit isn't just about bandages and antiseptics. It's about having essential medications on hand. It's about learning basic medical skills, knowing how to treat minor injuries, how to manage chronic conditions without the usual medical support. In a post-SHTF world, your health is your wealth. But in order to protect it, you need to be prepared today, not tomorrow. In a disaster, shelters can be a double-edged sword. At first glance, they offer refuge, a place of safety amidst the chaos. But as they become overcrowded, they can turn into breeding grounds for danger. Imagine a confined space filled with anxious, desperate individuals all with their own stories, fears, and motivations. These conditions can easily create opportunities for crime. It's not uncommon for theft or violence to occur, 
as some may seize the chance to exploit the vulnerable. Moreover, security in these places can be lacking. With resources stretched thin, maintaining order and safety can become an uphill battle. So when you're considering seeking shelter, it's crucial to weigh the risks. Are there alternative options? Can you create your own safe space? It's about more than just finding a roof over your head. It's about ensuring your personal safety. In the face of disaster, you must remember, safety in numbers, not always. Disasters can turn any area into a lawless zone. This is particularly true for regions already notorious for high crime rates, the uncontrolled, and the lawless. The chaos that ensues following a disaster often gives rise to an environment where the rule of law is temporarily suspended. During these times, the risk of looting, violence, and property crimes dramatically increases. It's a Wild West scenario where desperation and fear can drive otherwise law-abiding citizens to commit unthinkable acts. Police forces are often stretched thin, focusing their efforts on rescue and recovery. This lack of law enforcement presence can embolden criminals, escalating the danger. In these zones, survival becomes a ruthless game. It's every man for himself. The social order collapses and the primal instincts reign supreme. It's a grim reality, but one that we must confront when preparing for potential disasters. In a disaster, your safest bet is to avoid these areas at all costs. When society crumbles, property rights become paramount. This isn't just about legalities, it's about survival. In the chaos of a post-disaster world, individuals become exceedingly protective and suspicious. Your neighbor's backyard, that open field, or the abandoned warehouse, all these suddenly transform into fortresses, off-limits to outsiders. This heightened vigilance is fueled by fear and desperation. People are trying to safeguard their resources, their families, and their lives. Trespassing, even unintentionally, can trigger confrontations that might escalate quickly. In such situations, diplomacy and negotiation skills can be your best defense. Yet the safest bet is always to stick to public spaces and predetermined evacuation routes. These paths are designed to keep you away from private property and guide you towards safe zones. Keep your map handy and your route clear. Remember, in a world where boundaries are redrawn overnight, understanding and respecting these new lines is crucial. In a post-SHTF world, respect for property could save your life. In a disaster, the open road can be a dangerous place. The familiar hum of traffic can morph into a cacophony of desperation. Highways and main roads, once conduits of convenience, can become clogged arteries of chaos, choked with cars and fraught with tension. The potential for encounters with desperate individuals heightens, and the simple task of getting from point A to B can become a perilous journey. In such times, the importance of knowing alternative routes cannot be overstated. Backroads, little-known shortcuts and forgotten trails can become lifelines providing a way around the snarled traffic and potential dangers. It's a bit like playing chess. Always thinking a few moves ahead, anticipating roadblocks and having a plan B and C and D. So in a post-disaster world your GPS might not be your best friend. Your knowledge, your instincts, and your ability to adapt to the changing landscape will be. Remember, knowing your way around could be your ticket to survival. In a disaster, some threats are invisible. Imagine a world where unseen dangers lurk in places we often take for granted. Industrial hazardous material storage and transport facilities are just such places. These are not your typical warehouses or shipping centers. They contain substances that in ordinary times are safely tucked away. But after a disaster, these substances can pose severe health and safety risks. In the flurry of chaos and uncertainty, it's easy to forget about these silent threats. But it is crucial to remember that these facilities house materials that can turn a bad situation into a nightmare. Picture this. Chemicals, radioactive materials, flammable substances, all potentially unleashed by the chaos of a disaster. Avoidance and caution are not just advisable, they're necessary. These invisible threats can cause long-term damage, far beyond the immediate effects of the disaster itself. So remember, in a post-SHTF world, knowledge is your best defense. In the face of disaster, preparation is key. We've journeyed through the chaos of post-disaster landscapes, highlighting the 10 places that are best to avoid when the proverbial stuff hits the fan. From crowded public spaces prone to panic and stampedes, to the grocery stores and gas stations overrun by panic shoppers. We've learned about the pitfalls of gun stores, hospitals, and pharmacies, all of which become hotbeds of desperation. 
the dangers of overcrowded shelters, high crime areas, other people's land, heavily traveled roads, and hazardous material facilities all underscore the importance of being prepared and having a well-thought-out plan. Every disaster scenario is unique, and the more knowledge we have, the better we can navigate these challenging times. So, how about you? Do you have your own tips or experiences to share? Let's continue the conversation in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe for more, and follow us to stay informed. Remember, stay prepared, stay safe.